Hey guys, and welcome to a very delicious, um, I mean exciting visual effects tutorial. By now you should all know how to create that simple cloning effect that you can see all over YouTube. If you do not know how that works, I have a tutorial for that on my channel that you can check out and I will drop the link down below. Still good. In this video, we're going to look at how you can start to interact with your clones. Well, one way of interacting anyway. This type of indirect interaction is likely the easiest effect to achieve and while I might talk about the more advanced stuff later on, let's for now simply look at how you can steal some nachos from your clones using Adobe After Effects. Work first try. Fortunately, that is actually pretty easy to do and so this is going to be an upper beginner tutorial. I will mainly assume that you are familiar with the basics of Adobe After Effects and that you do know all about masking and animating your masks. But now, before anyone has time to steal my nachos, let's jump right into the tutorial. Hey. Oh, fudge. Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe After Effects and we are going to start out with a brand new empty project. Let's first import the footage that we need to create this effect into our project. And if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, go to surfacedstudio.com slash downloads and you'll be able to download all of these clips for yourself. So you can just follow along and create your own thieving clones effect. So let's import our footage, thieving clones one, two and three into our project. And let's grab thieving clones 01.mp4 and drag it onto the new composition icon to, well, create a new composition. This is the clip of the first of the three clones. So it's essentially Walter sitting on the couch, placing the nachos on the ground. At this moment, the second clone will steal his nacho back. And so Walter just turns around, turns back, and essentially pretends like the nachos are no longer there. Now, it is important that you film these clips in sequence because otherwise you will not be able to properly pass that object along from clone to clone. Let's grab Thieving Clones 02.mp4 and drag it into the composition, place it at the very top. And not surprising, this is clone number two. And if you rewind, the nacho bag is essentially still lying in the same spot where the first clone left it. This, however, is a clip of the second clone stealing that nacho bag and placing it on the left side of the couch. And then the third clone will steal that one again. And the second clone pretends like it's no longer there. So let's grab Thieving Clones 03.mp4, drop it into the composition. And no surprise, this is the clip of the third clone, which if you rewind it a little bit, starts out with the nacho bag still on the side of the couch where the second clone left it. Now the third clone comes in, snatches it off there and gets to keep those nachos. Now, a lot of people ask me how I time my cloning clips because obviously you're filming the same scene multiple times and everything needs to be time-wise aligned, otherwise this just will not work. Now, one way to do this is to simply count out the seconds quietly in your head as you're filming these clips. A much easier way, however, is to fire up an audio recorder, which you can even do on your phone, and simply record yourself narrating the script. For example, I might record something like this. Walter enters the screen and sits on the couch. Then he slowly looks at the nacho bag and places it on the ground. Second clone is waiting. Then when you're recording your footage, simply play this audio back somewhere off screen so that you're getting cues on what to do when with your clones. Once you have all your clips and you've brought them into something like Adobe After Effects, you now just need to stitch them together. For that, let's rewind our composition, disable the visibility on Thieving Clones 03, so we just got clone layer one and two. And let's draw a mask around this clone so we're kind of cutting him out and cutting a hole into this layer where the first clone can show through. For that, make sure Thieving Clones 02 is selected, grab the pen tool, and let's come up and draw a mask around the left side of this clone. I do not want to include this nacho bag here. So let's just draw a big mask around this side and I'm going to include everything on the right because the third clone is again is going to be overlaying on top of that anyways. Let's close up this mask, zoom back in, and now if we scrub through, we have the first clone come in and sit on the couch and uh, I think he's getting cut off a little bit on the side here. So you have to be careful with where you're placing your mask. I'm just going to bring this in a little bit. Also at the beginning, I can see the shadow of the first clone being cut off down here at the bottom. So what I probably want to do, let's zoom in a little bit on that part. Let's just bring this mask in a little bit closer to his foot. And I also want to kind of include this area and allow the shadow of the first clone to kind of fall across. For that, I might bring all of these mask points nice and close to the second clone, kind of like that. Let's zoom back out 
And obviously that mask edge is way too harsh. You can kind of see a dark edge over the couch and especially now here with the shadow along the feet. So let's select our Thieving Clones 02, press MM to reveal the mask properties. Let's just give it a bit of feathering, maybe 20, 30, maybe even 40 pixels or something. Just make sure that you're not kind of bleeding away the foot because obviously you're softening out the edge of this mask. And if you go in too close, you're starting to kind of make him disappear. So let's just make sure that looks all right. And the shadows here, it just looks a little bit nicer and softer. So that looks okay. Let's check this out to see what that looks like with the first clone coming in. Yep, cool. So you can see his shadow falling across looks much more natural and interactive. First clone sits down, places the nacho bag on the ground. And right here, the second clone needs to steal that nacho bag. However, right now, his hand just disappears because the mask isn't following his movement and so he just gets cut off. So for that, we simply need to animate this mask path. Let's rewind a little bit. And just after the first clone dropped off the nacho bag, right here we have plenty of time to essentially cut this mask over to include the nacho bag so that the second clone can then pick it up. So maybe right about here when the first clone pulls his arm back in so we're not accidentally cutting that off. Let's enable the stopwatch icon for the mask path. Let's go forward just a little bit, maybe to right about here, just before the clone starts moving his foot, right about there. Let's just click outside of this mask somewhere and let's drag the corners and expand this to essentially include the area of this nacho bag. So we essentially kind of cut across from one to the other. And I also want to include the shadow because then the second clone can kind of pick this up and the shadow will follow along. So we now essentially have this mask slowly fading across and right here you can kind of see the shadow of the first clone disappearing but it's not going to be all that noticeable because the transition is fairly slow and the first clone is actually moving about so it kind of looks believable. So now the natural bag essentially sneakily transitions over to be part of the second clone. So let me select the layer so you can see what happens to the mask. So the mask essentially slowly expands to include the natural bag that is part of the second clone footage and now the second clone can essentially just pick it up from there and place it on the edge of the couch. Let's just scrub through the end, make sure everything is okay and we're not cutting anything off with the masks. That looks pretty cool. Now we just need to repeat the process for the third clone. Let's collapse all of our layers, enable the visibility on our Thieving Clones 03, which obviously is the third clone. And let's draw a mask around this one. Let's just come back a little bit to maybe about here where he's just about to steal the nacho back. Let's just draw a mask around him. Let's grab the pen tool. Make sure your Thieving Clones 03 layer is selected. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's just draw a mask around his outline. And I do want to include his foot down here, but I don't want to include much of this carpeted area. Avoid cutting masks across really even areas like this carpeted area here. Shadow transitions will be quite obvious and you have a really nice edge here for the kitchen anyway. So let's rather just draw this mask along the edge of the kitchen and maybe just up on the wall here. It just, it'll just fit into the footage so much nicer. Let's close this mask. That looks pretty good, but we're cutting off the foot of the second clone. So let's just expand this a little bit to make sure we're kind of getting a nice transition between these two feet. Cool, that's not bad, that's looking all right. Let's just make sure we're obviously including all of the leg of the third clone and maybe just push this out just a little bit more Include as much as you can without obviously impacting the second clone in this layer. So that looks all right. Now to animate this mask, let's just come to after the second clone places it on the side of the couch and moves his hand away. And now again, we can sneakily transition this mask over to include this nacho bag. For that, select your Thieving Clones 03, press MM to reveal the mask properties, enable the stopwatch icon next to the mask path. Let's just move forward to just before the clone is about to grab it, maybe right about there. And let's drag the mask over to include all of the nacho back. So the third clone can simply steal it and take it away. So that transition again happens nice and slowly and sneakily. I can still see a little bit of a light brightness transition here. So again, let's just add a bit of feathering to this mask, maybe 20 to 30 pixels, just a little bit to make that transition nice and soft. And then the third clone can steal it away. Let's just scrub to the end to make sure that looks all right. Let's also come down here and make sure we're not having any issues with those feet. Uh, right about there, they're kind of blending just a little bit. So let me just adjust the mask a little bit more so it kind of doesn't look too unnatural. And 
before the third clone's foot come in, I might actually animate this mask back just to make sure the second clone's foot is not impacted at all. So I'm just gonna drag this over to the side here. So then it expands out. And yes, there's a little bit, like a little bit of an overlay happening when the foot is going down right there. So I'll just bring this in just a little bit more, but it's going to be so minuscule, nobody's going to notice, to be honest. And then foot goes away, and I might actually move this mask again, just back to the edge of the kitchen. It'll just, it'll just work a little bit nicer. Cool, that looks all right. Let's zoom back out, collapse our layers, rewind and play this back. Cool, that's looking really nice. Now, two things I quickly want to fix up. Let's select Thieving Clones 02, press U to reveal all of the keyframes, select the keyframes of this mask and press F9 to enable Bezier interpolation. It'll just make that movement of the mask a little bit less robotic and it'll just fade in a little bit more smoothly. Let's also select Clones Layer 03, press U. Again, let's select all of the keyframes and press F9 for Bezier interpolation. And let me just zoom in at the end here, I did notice that there was a little bit of that nacho bag left. So let's come to the last keyframe and make sure that the cursor is exactly on that last keyframe. So hold down shift or press K to jump forward or J to jump backwards to the last keyframe. So we're snapped onto that and select the layer. It's going to bring this mask in just a little bit more because I can see it's just, it's just that corner of the nacho bag left, which I don't really want. So let's just bring this out a little. Yep, cool, I think that looks better. Let's zoom back out. Select all layers, Control A or Command and A, press U to collapse them all. Finally, I always recommend that you apply some color correction or color grading effects to all of the layers in your composition together. What that does is, similar to making a sandwich, you can have lots of different layers, but until you put them through a common process like a sandwich press or a toaster that binds those layers together, it's just clearly just separate layers. Similar with visual effects, works with audio the same way. If you apply the same effect to all of the individual elements, they all kind of feel like they belong together just a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some simple color grading. And for that, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. Make sure the adjustment layer is at the very top of your composition. And maybe I'll rename this as well to color grading. And obviously you can apply whatever effect you want to this layer. The one that I personally always like to use is the curves effect. So let's grab that from the effects and presets panel and apply it to our color grading adjustment layer. In the settings for the curves effect, I just want to add a little bit of contrast. So let's push up the top end of this curve and bring down the bottom end just to add a little bit more contrast. And let's add a little bit of color as well. So change the channel over to blue, for example. I just wanna add a bit of blue into the dark area. So I'm going to click in the middle of the curve to lock that down right there. And just gonna bring up the bottom end just to add a little bit of bluish tint into all of the dark areas in my footage. Let's switch over to red because it nicely contrasts with blue. Again, click in the middle to lock it down. And I'm just going to add a little bit of red into the highlight, into the bright areas of my footage. So just push that upper curve up a little. And you can see, you can obviously overdo it and you get a lot of red. Don't want to go quite that crazy, just a little bit. So it warms up the bright areas of my footage just a little bit. And I'm finding it's getting a bit too red. So let's switch this over to the green channel. Again, lock it down in the middle. Just push a little bit of green into the highlights as well. So it's more like a sunny day kind of feeling, but quite contrasty it's quite a poppy image so this is without the curves effect that is with the curves effect and it just a it adds a lot of style that personally i like but it also binds those three layers together a little bit more and so the transitions and the masks and all the blending that we're doing is a little bit less obvious but now i'm really getting hungry for some nachos so let's rewind our composition and play back our final thieving clones effect You know how some people make this look elegant? All I'm making is a mess. And that's all there is to it. 
If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. But now, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.